Welcome to Pre-Service, a podcast all about preparing you for worship at Silverdale Baptist Church. My name is Michael, and I am with my friend Kevin. Hey, and brother. we're glad to be together with you. Yeah, thank you for taking the time to watch. If you're watching, if you're listening on a podcast, thank you for taking the time to listen. Uh, we enjoy this opportunity to spend time in God's Word and spend time with you. So we hope that this is beneficial to you as you're preparing for church this Sunday as a matter of fact, isn't there something? Yeah, special? yeah. And heads up about this Sunday, we're having communion. It's a nice. super big deal. Uh, this is the Sunday before Easter, and yeah. so as as we typically do at Silverdale, we celebrate communion the Sunday before Easter. So make sure you're there. That's a significant part of worship. Now, yeah. you know this is a a symbolic remembering of what Jesus did for us. You know, Jesus says, as often as you do this, you do this in remembrance of me. And it's done in community. And it's done in community. So yeah. if you can be in person, that's fantastic. If you can't join us in person, we do have our online services and we just encourage you to get prepared ahead of time. So yes, don't, and don't, we'll be celebrating there as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, if you're not able to get out and get the grape juice and the, the crackers, crackers, bread, crackers whatever, anything yeah. will work. Is I guess is what I'm trying to say. Just make sure you have something. Yes, for that, that that is not the the critical piece of it, right? That's right. That's that's not what we're focusing on here. Uh, the, the point is, we want to celebrate in remembrance of what Jesus has done for us. So, and yeah. I think we're going to dig into that a little. We bit are. Here. We're going to talk about that a little bit more as as this episode continues. We are studying the book of Hebrews as a church. We are in chapter ten. Our pastor is preaching a series called All In, and as we look at chapter 10 tonight, there are so many wonderful truths in this chapter. And As you're reading this using the SOAP Bible study method we talk about often, if you're new to that, it's, it's an acronym, S-O-A-P, uh, scripture, scripture, reading the Scripture, observation, making observation, application. Uh, what is it the Lord would have me do with what with he's this saying here? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then praying about it. So that's that's what the SOAP acronym stands for. And so we're real heavy on the observation in this po in, podcast. In this podcast, yeah. So, so when we come here, we do a whole lot of sharing. But because that application can be personal to you or, or anybody else you're around, sometimes that's better done in a smaller setting, sometimes just you. It may be something that you put down in, in a notebook, in a diary somewhere. It, it may be something that you share with a friend. If you have an accountability partner, you may share some of the application or even in your small group, it may be effective for you to share with others. And, and then we pray. And certainly as we come together, that's something that if I share with somebody, I'm going to expect they're going to be praying with me about whatever the application is for me. And you know, Michael, that kind of flows into what you and I have talked about with chapter 10, because this chapter is so full of many different truths. It kind of is a, a turning point, right, in Hebrews that a lot has built up to it. One of the things that we want to encourage you with is there are passages in the Bible, and because of the way that it's broken up in chapters, there may be a chapter or a passage that has a lot of truths. And sometimes I can read those truths, and one thing will stand out to me, and maybe the next time I read it, something else stands out to me. Have you ever read that? That's so true. That's so true. You know, as I was reading through chapter 10, um, I was reminded of something that that God spoke into my heart. Gosh, it's been 20 years ago uh, when 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 this happened. There was a, a, a was man, back before I knew you. Yeah, it was well before we knew each other. Yeah. So there was a there was a man named Bob Warren. He was my mentor. Back as yeah. I was finishing up college, Bob played professional basketball back in the 70s. Oh, wow. And that's cool. When the ABA folded and the NBA, you know, he pulled out and, and God had been really working in his life, saved him, and he spent the rest of his life teaching How the awesome. Bible. And I just had the fortune to, to sit underneath his teaching for a few years. And, and one of the things that he encouraged me with, um, was a, you know a truth in in chapter ten verses ten and fourteen. I want to read those two verses. Uh, you know the ESV wasn't even around back then. Yeah, uh, this was in the in the late nineties. We he was he was a big fan of the New American Standard Bible, and because he was, I'm still a big fan of the New American Standard. I am too. Yeah, we we use ESV, but yes, I like yeah. it. Yeah, and so uh, chapter ten verse ten says, and and by that will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. So in that verse, it talks about how we have been, past tense, sanctified in, in who we are before the Lord, in relationship with the Lord. We are completely 
sanctified. Well, that's interesting because we're still going through a sanctification process, right? I'm just saying there might be some people who are listening who might not know what sanctified means. Yeah, yeah, explain that. So sanctification or being sanctified is being made holy. So what he's saying here is through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all, we have been made holy, right? That's right. But then you get down to verse 14, Uh oh, and it says, it says, for by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. So no, wait a minute. It says that we have been sanctified, but here it says we are in the process of being sanctified. And, and it almost sounds like a contradiction, right? It, it does. When you first hear it, it can stand out as odd to your ears. Right, right. And but as you as you grow in your faith, and this may not be a new truth to you, and if it isn't new truth to you, praise the Lord. I'm I'm glad He's revealing it to you. Um, through but this at podcast. the time, it was it was something that really was... I hadn't really thought a lot about it back then, and, and it meant a lot to me that you know here it says that God has perfected me in my yes. relationship with Him, but He's still in the process of perfecting me. Um, Brother, sanctifying me, making me holy, and you know, in in, in my habit patterns, in my yes. thought life, in yes. my behaviors, all those things are still in process of being sanctified. Yes. So I am sanctified, and I'm being sanctified. That was a really helpful truth for me to learn back in college. And right? and there's a difference sometimes for us. In we not sometimes this is a difference. There's a difference in how God declares us holy. Right. We've been sanctified. I'm holy. I'm made right with God. But in my body, because I still live in time in this world with this flesh, I still wrestle with that process of experiencing that sanctification, that holiness, in, in as you said, in my thoughts, in, in my actions. And I will see that, and we know that Peter and Paul both talk about how we'll see those things increasing, those habits, those the fruit of the Spirit working its way out through my body, through my actions, in my mind, in right. my thoughts. And so... It makes sense because I'm betting you, viewer, listener, I'm betting you too understand I've been made holy before God. I've been perfected before God because of the actions of Jesus Christ. But boy, some days I don't feel it. You know, some and days here, I struggle with it. And here it is 20 plus years later. Yes. Um, and and I'm still growing, right? You mean you're I, not perfect yet? I'm not perfect yet, you're not still, in that way. As long as you're in your flesh, you are still wrestling with that, right? And so as a pastor... Um, you know, reading through this with a pastor's heart, a father's heart, I get down to verses 19 through 25, and it talks about the importance of us gathering together. Oh, well, yeah. here we are. We've we've come out of a quarantine where everybody around the world yes. was under a, a form of lockdown. We all called it right. Yep. Uh, of sorts, and and so now we've come out of that in large part. Maybe you haven't, and we understand that there are some that are still needing to and desiring to yes. quarantine. Uh, but in large part, society has moved on in that way. Well, and even, COVID's still a big deal, right? Even if you aren't able to completely join together and come out of COVID, if you're dealing with something, thank God we have methods now that enable people to interact and join in, even if you are dealing with the effects of COVID or some other that's illness right. or something. Yeah, that's a, that's one of those co we call them COVID keepers around here. That's, that's one of those it. things that we've gained and learned from yes. from covid there, there wasn't as maybe there wasn't as big a driver to to resolve some of those issues covid came along and thank god we were able to take advantage of a lot of things we have technology capabilities skill sets that people had and right. and gain something from that but part of the sanctification process for me right now and for you and all of us is figuring out what this means to not neglect gathering together oh that's big you know so that's just a part of 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 my growth process, your growth process. And and the Bible says here in verses 24 and 25, and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. So recently I had the privilege of going to Grace mm -hmm. Baptist Academy and 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 speaking at their chapel and they asked me to speak on encouragement. Now studying this passage and so here's another truth. Yes. You know, gathering together, sanctification, being sanctified, sanctified in the process of being sanctified. All these truths, right? And here's right. another one on encouraging each other. Part of the reason we gather together whether it's in a small group setting or right. you know, just in fellowship individually yes. or as a corporate body for worship is to encourage each other. So it's there's a truth. Yeah, it's obviously a huge piece. I mean, if we go back to verse 19 and we read, therefore, 
mm -hmm. right? The, he he makes a transition. He's built up a lot of stuff, not just in verse, in, not just in chapter ten, but throughout Hebrews, he's gotten to this point. He says, "Therefore, because we have confidence to enter the holy place." So, therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy place, and then he goes forward, and part of that is about. These things are the, are true. We we uh, draw near with a true heart and full assurance. Uh, we hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. Again, perseverance. Uh, we consider how to stir one another up, and we don't fail to come together. But I think that this is a huge piece in chapter 10 that, that says, hey, I've built on the fact that Jesus is your great high priest. I've built on the fact that he's better than the prophets. He's he's better than the angels. He's better than the sacrifice. He's better than Moses. He's better than Joshua. He, he go, he's gone through a whole set, and now he's saying you have full assurance of faith, right? right. And here's a thing that comes out of that. You should be encouraging one another. So as you're making observations about this passage, this chapter rather, God may be speaking another truth into your life from another point in this. Now, I want to be clear about what I'm saying here. Yeah. There are those uh, out there, not here, <laughs> who would teach no. that that there are different truths. Your truth is your truth. My truth is my truth. And tell me about your truth. I want to hear about your truth. Well, that's not the way we're using the word. That is not at all. The Bible is the way, the singular truth. Yes. And well, I should say Jesus is the way, the truth, the truth, and, and the, the life. life. And 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 the Bible is His word to us. Now, there are so many different truths within that that at different seasons God will speak in different ways, but He doesn't yeah. change. No, and, and that was kind of what we were alluding to at the beginning of this episode uh, when we were saying, you know, this chapter is very full with a lot of truth. And and that truth, as Michael shared his experience 20 years ago when he was reading through it, there were a couple of verses that just stood out, and and God was dealing with him because, thank God, our, our God is merciful. He meets us where we are. He moves us through understanding, and it's not about us learning more about God. Satan has lived his entire existence either in the presence of God or in, in, in warfare with God, open rebellion, but he's been around for a much longer than I have. It's not just about learning or thinking about certain things or finding information out. It's about obedience. It's about growing in Jesus Christ. And that's a thing that we can do is actually grow in Christ. So as we're working through this, part of my growth in Christ is... I may find something here that I have a hard time wrapping my mind around. I may find something, a truth in God's Word that I have a hard time finding my life aligning with. And that that is a place where I can say right now, and according to your experience too, at this point, this is the truth I'm wrestling with, trying to take into my life and see something, again, back at the application level. I want to see an application in my life because of this. Because when I read it, it makes sense to me that this is an important statement. But I'm struggling on how do I apply this? What does this mean to me? As you were with, chap with uh, chapter 10, verse 10, and verse 14, as you saw, I've been sanctified, but I'm still being sanctified. What does that mean? So, and I when, think verses 26 and beyond really get into some of what you're talking about here. Yeah. There are hard truths in this passage. To well, process. we've seen that in other places in Hebrews, right? True. We, as we read through different places in Hebrews, there are, there are some sections, and we've called a few of them out, that can be challenging for us to read and, and interpret and understand what does that mean for me. I think when we go back to the idea that, that communion is coming up, and we read some of the sections, like in 26 and forward, we read some of those things and we see that there are consequences to things that we do as believers. There are things that, that we have to be mindful that we do them with a the right attitude, a right, a right spirit, that we approach these things with reverence to God and, and recognizing the import of the, the sacrifice that was made for us. I think Paul spoke about this in, in Corinthians when he talks about this, and he says, hey, there are consequences. Some of you believers are sick and some are asleep, slumber, or dead um, because of the way you went about something as a believer. And I think this section right here, to me, 
is the warning that the author of Hebrews was giving to these Jewish believers and saying, don't do things lightly. I mean, he's just come through a passage where he says, meet together, encourage one another. You know, this is part of your job to encourage each other on to right living. And then he says, hey, here's the other hand. Right. And all of this comes to a conclusion down in verse 39, where, and I just want to read the verse, but we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who have faith and persevere their souls. In, in, a, in previous sections of Hebrews, the author has talked about perseverance and, and the true believer, the true Christian, that, that, that man or woman who has truly been sanctified but is in the process of being sanctified, yeah, and don't let that knock persevere. you off. Exactly. That, that's the thing. If you're, you know, for the believers out there who read a section that's challenging, and th like we've said, there are a few in here. When you read a, a section that's challenging and you begin to examine your life, that is altogether a good thing to do. To examine your life in front of God's Word and say, this is a place where I've been sanctified, but I may be struggling with being sanctified right now. Don't let that dampen your your faith that the Lord is, he, He's done that work in you once for all, and that you're coming into alignment with who He wants you to be in Jesus Christ. If you examine your life and you say, I don't find other fruit, now that's a different problem, right? That's right. That's a place where you need to probably go and, and talk to somebody, come in, call somebody here at the church, reach out to us through this podcast, but... And we would love to have a conversation along those lines. Absolutely. With you. We would absolutely be honored to do that. Uh, but for the believer, you will persevere. And yes. that's something that can bring us a lot of encouragement and a lot of hope uh, in, in, a, in times of need. And Getting peace, back yes. back to chapter four, that we can approach the throne of grace in yes. our time of need. And we will persevere. Well, I'm excited about, uh, about worship this weekend. Kevin, and communion. And communion being a part of that. And we hope that you will be a part of that with us. We have a number of service opportunities, one on Saturday night here on the Bonnie Oaks campus. And then I say here on the Bonnie Oaks because we record That's where we record in the Bonnie Oaks campus. But, but maybe you attend North Udawa, maybe you attend St. Elmo, or maybe you live in those areas. And, and that would be a, a, a closer fit for you. Uh, wherever you attend worship, we just we hope that you'll join us this weekend. If you're yeah. new to Silverdale, you can find out about times and locations at our website. We even have a couple of online options that if you can't make it in person, we would love for you to join us there. Yeah. So spend some time with the Lord in His Word and enjoy Him this week. 